Have you noticed a lot more people suddenly bringing their pets everywhere? Grocery stores, restaurants, the mall, even on board long plane trips. A lot of these people claim they need their pets as support animals, but others argue these are just regular pets. They're not specially trained and that they're actually endangering those with serious disabilities. I counted a lot of dogs in the mall. I encounter a lot of dogs uh, in the beach area, downtown, in restaurants, even sometimes in classrooms, on campus. Getting around town has recently become more difficult for 19-year-old Joseph Chica, who is legally blind. I was at an event this weekend uh, where I was aware that there was going to be a great amount of dogs. And I, in fact, I thought there was going to be so many that it was going to be too many for us to adequately work and to work safely, so I had to leave my dog at home. Joseph works with Gunner. He's a specially trained service dog. It took two years to turn Gunner into the kind of working animal that can help Joseph get around town and stay safe. But as more people take their untrained pets into public places, Joseph says this means danger for him. It happens to me every day. Uh, I'll be walking around and somebody will be walking past me with another dog. My protocol is to make sure my dog doesn't interact, keep him under control. Usually I'll just stop walking and have him sit and stay next to me. They'll just give their dog a longer leash to come say hi to my dog. Now I'm disoriented, not knowing so much where my landmarks are, where my cues are, and it it's, poses a, a threat to my safety and to my dog's safety. Literally it's like parking in a disabled spot. Uh, when you aren't disabled. Kendall veterinarian Dr. Ian Kupke suspects the reason more animals are in public places is because people are taking advantage of the rules when it comes to emotional support animals, or ESAs. When you have a person who goes online and gets a service dog vest and puts it on their dachshund and says, I have a service dog, Publix has to let me in. Instant service dog. In other cases, people go further than that. You can simply go online, fill out a questionnaire, claim you have anxiety or anger issues, pay up to 200 bucks, and have your dog registered as an ESA. No questions asked. According to the American Disabilities Act, businesses are allowed to ask if an animal is a service dog and how they assist their handlers, but a business cannot ask for any kind of documents or proof or refuse service, leading many, no doubt, to stretch the truth. This is not a victimless crime. What you're doing is making it a lot harder for people who need service dogs to function through life. This is not to say that there may be a legitimate need for some emotional support animals. The whole online thing, I think that, like, I think that that should be like somehow like monitored. On this day, Krupa Desai was making her way around Aventura Mall with her puppy. She's training to be a psychiatric service dog. I had to get her registra registered as, as an ESA so she could actually live with me. I get panic attacks, so so it definitely helps like having her there. Like She'll start licking me and stuff like that. Members of the disabled community hope that educating pet owners will encourage them to make smarter, compassionate decisions when it comes to their own animals. And again, it's not to say that any, that people don't have need for emotional support animals because that isn't the case. It's making sure that all our animals can work together safely. Well, we've been getting a lot of reaction to this story all night long. No law requires owners to have their emotional support animals to be certified. Retailers can stop them and ask for what disability your dog has been trained. And if the pet is misbehaving, whether it's a service dog or just a pet dog, they can be asked to leave the facility.